World Tour racing is back in this month of January in the Santos Tour Down Under. So his stage six of last year's tour, basically, Queen stage up Wollonga twice. So I'll talk through through what I think is going to happen this year. So Richie Port's back. I think um, again Bernal is here from <laughs> Colombia. He's a world class climber. Uh, Lachlan Morton's going to be there. Nathan Hass is going to be there. Um, George Bennett's going to be there. Um, who else is going to be there? Another Lotto man. Old Robert Hessink, um, and I'm not too sure about everyone else, but there'll be some world-class climbers there. Um, I'm not sure if Chavez is doing it. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, there's two stages which are going to be decisive. Though. I think there's one up Norton Summit, um, which go up Norton Summit, and like 10k to go. Um, uh, from the top of the climb, it's 10k to go. Then there's also Wollonga twice. Um, so at the moment, break, going to get caught, 6k to go, basically Richie Port. Is good. This is where he likes to go. Um, so what I think is going to happen, I think it'll be a pretty, pretty similar um, outcome to last last time. To be honest, um, I think that most of the sprint stage is going to be won by Caleb Ewan. Um, I think in reality it will be hard for anyone to beat him. Maybe Sagan might have a chance, but I think it will be quite tough for him um, just because Caleb Ewan is really um, peaking for this event, and also he's had lots of um, racing experience in the. For instance, he won the recent. Uh, Criterium Championship um, in Australia, and he's also has won his well. He's going to race the national championship, um, so definitely um, it will be easier for him to have a better form than Sagan. For Sagan, I mean, a lot of people are saying that he just comes for the money or whatever. Um, but anyway, so I think stage one is just a sprint. I'm just going through the stages here. Um, so stage one, I think, will just be. A sprint, and then I, I can't remember all the stages to be honest, but I know that it's going to be tough to beat Richie Port up. Um, ah, here we go. Tore down under 2018 race guide. Sorry about this. Bit unprofessional. Um, so there's the yeah sprint first stage. Then there's the Sterling Day, where it's a bit hilly, but basically ends up with a reduced bunch sprint. Then there's Gnau Gnau to Victor Harbour, which again will be a sprint. Then there's Norwood to Arrydalder, which is basically this is the one I said going up Norton Summit. It could be very selective, depends if people race it. Um, then there's Wollong Hill, which is stage five, and then stage six is basically just the sprint circuit. Um, so it would definitely be interesting to see what what goes on. Um, Movistar brings some climbers. Oh, Pots of Viva is there. Both Izaguirre brothers are there as well. There'll be some good climbers. Hopefully, I'll get a ride with a couple of them beforehand to see how they're all going. Stan will have some good blokes, I think. Um, they always seem to be quite up for it, um, but it'll be interesting to see how everyone is going. Richie Port, will he win again? I think he probably will. He quite likes the race. He's really good on those short climbs, like eight-minute climbs, six-minute climbs. He's very, very strong. Um, it's annoying Hanau's not there because Hanau's also very strong. Be interesting though if um, like Kwiatkowski does. I think Kwiatkowski could really rail, <laughs> rail it as well because he'd win a lot of the bonus seconds. It really does suit someone who can do the sprinting bonus seconds, but I think because Richie Port's such a strong climber, you can just make all the differences on the climb itself. Um, so you can see this is all Wollonga Hill. I haven't actually done it yet. Um, I better saw my life out and go do it. Um, I think it's, it's like 2.5k, 7%, so nothing crazy, nothing steep really. It's just like, for pros, that's probably like 25, 26ks an hour on so that sort of a gradient, because it, on that sort of a climb, it's 7%, 8% gradient, because they'll be going at like 8 watts per kilo for that sort of effort, 7.5, 8 watts per kilo, so... They was zooming up that, um, it will seem like it's a sort of a 5% climb for them because of the speed. So you can see everyone's driving into the bottom. Kenny Anderson, cutest bloke in the peloton, 52 kilo leg on the left. Um, quick step on the front. I'm not sure who they're working for. I think Brembina might be there. Um, but Hanau is there. Mike Woods is there. Mike Woods might be doing Tour de Lander again. I'm not sure. He's always always does well. He, he came fourth, I think, overall in his GC in his first World Tour race, um, which is quite insane. Um, a couple of years back, that must have been now. Um, ZBMC are going to always have bring a strong team. They've got a lot of Australians as well. Uh, Rowan Dennis, Miles well, Scottson, uh, Gerrans now, so that, that'll be interesting to see. Um, but you can see there's well, decent crowds. It's getting to the point where everyone's really trying to get on the front, um, reaching the bottom of the climb. Uh, you can see Sky on the left, Orica now moving up for Gerrans, I think. Um, Bora, Bora there as well. Jamie Carthy always as well a lot of the australians really concentrate on it i guess it's easy for them because it's summer and also they've probably been doing some high intensity races previously 
um, in the summer months. Well, for Europeans, it's a bit of a shock. Maybe they weren't used to doing high intensity and... I don't know, there doesn't seem to be the same motivation, because in the last, like, four or five years, literally every single winner has been Australian. Um, all the stage wins have almost been Australian as well. It's got quite ridiculous recently. Because um, KW gets the sprints and an Australian climbers get everything else. Um, so you can see Kenny Ellison is driving on the front. Real good wattage. I'm not sure who is behind him. I might be Kenya. I'm not sure. No, you, I don't know who it is, sorry. Um, and I think Sergio Hanau is there as well, but not in his Colombian Champions kit, because I think he won that in February. Uh, you can see Richie Ports in the Oka jersey. Uh, Espan Chavez is there. Lachlan Morton, I think, is just behind. Uh, you can see number 43, I believe, is Sergio Hanau. He's looking pretty good. Um, this is the back. I don't know why they always show these pictures. Like, yeah, they got dropped. Sick. Like, they're probably going to get dropped. I mean, <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay, they even got dropped. It's like, well, yeah, it's a sprinter. That's not really that surprising. Sky doing quite a good job here. Stringing it out, dropping lots of blokes. It'll be the same this year. I think the... Wollonga stage is pretty similar almost every year, where it's just like someone's on the front and then basically drills it and then port attacks or something like that. I think port's one of the last three or four state for three or four years. It just attacks about one k to go, just distances everyone, and no one really comes close. It just depends if they've won bonus stages on previous days or managed to distance him. That's the only way, reason really why he doesn't um, win. Uh, well, yeah, why he hasn't won for the last? Uh, why he only won last year? I think not the years before. Kenny Ellison is doing a beautiful job on the lead out. Um, and you can see, um, I'm not sure who this bloke is. I actually can't recognise him at all. I should know him. Um, is that Logan Morton? Someone's getting dropped. Poor bloke. Uh, you can see some lotto blokes. I mean, to be honest, you can barely recognise him. This, this quality is so poor. I'm trying to pick out who this Skyrider is. Um, I know it says on the left hand sleeve, but. It's just so impossible to see. Everyone's looking around, what's going on, they all know it's coming. I think that's Pots of Evo in the AG2I or Le Mondial kit. Jamie McCarthy on the back. Um, it, was, it looks like a nice club, actually. Can't wait to do it, to be honest. Um, see a lot of people getting dropped. I think that's Mike Woods on the back. Is that... Um, I'm not sure who that lotto rider might be. It might be Tish Benute, to be fair. Um, they normally bring a big, strong team for um, sort of heavier riders for gripe or lead out. Because Greipel really likes coming down here. He's won it like three times or something. I think it used to be more of a sprinter's race back in the day than now. Where it's more of a puncher slash climber race. More of a spring classics race. They didn't really do any super long climbs. Um, I think the most is probably like a 10 or 15 minute effort. Um, so it's not crazy. Like I don't know. Norton Summit could be the longest climb. Maybe they do. Because I think Corkscrew is only like less than 10. This is less than 10. So none of them are going crazy long climbs. So you can see, I'm not sure who that bloke is, number 42, who does he look like, is it Wout Pools? Let me know if you know in the comments below, because I actually have no idea who it is, I think it might be Wout Pools, I'll have to go check that real quick, because this is actually really bugging me, um, number 42 was, oh, his brother, that's why it's Sebastian Hanau. And then you can see, sorry, I missed that. But Richie Port's now on the front. He's decided it's time time to go. Um, he doesn't he hasn't gone for a full gas attack. He's just up the pace a little bit. He's watching who can follow him. So Seb Hanau's now been dropped. It's Sergio. Sergio's there, the two Colombians, and a lotto rider. I'm not sure who that is. And there we go. Richie Port just attacks. Very smooth acceleration. Not a massive peak. It's like surge of power. Just smooth. Probably up to five, six hundred watts now. I'm just holding it. Probably, yeah, I mean, he's just still holding out good numbers, good numbers. He's really flowing along. He's probably maybe even 30 k an hour up this climb. He's absolutely flying along. Good cadence, very calm. You can see he looks like, when you, when you see this, look how much like excitement he has in his face. Look how much concentration he has in his face. He's like, right, this is my time. Let's fucking roll. Like he's, he's on it. You can tell he's sort of almost like out of his mind. He's just like so on it like some people when they look like suffering he just looks like he's absolutely loving this and just destroying it up the climb he knows he's going to win like when you're in top form which you must you must be close to top form on these sort of smaller efforts which you must be practicing and he is just flying up the climbs like just flying in the big ring just dominating i mean it's like it looks, looks almost flat i mean it's just just going so fast and hanau has been mightily dropped chavez has been mightily dropped and the lotto rider has also been mightily dropped like then he put about like 20 seconds into them in about like what three four hundred meters and maybe not even that 1k to go 
Bridgie Port's well clear, well clear. And, um, yeah, I mean, her now is struggling. Um, I mean, it'd be fair, it's probably steep enough for him. And he's also, he's quite a good, like, punchy rider. He always does well in the spring classics. Um, I think he had a good top 10 this year in, um, Amstel, no, not, yeah, Amstel Gold, I think it was. Um, him and Kwiatkowski made the final selection, so that was quite good. But, Richie Port, when he's in top form, it's very hard to contain him. I think he is one of the best climbers. Rumour has it he's a threshold of 400 watts at 60 kilos, which means he can do 7 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, which is outrageous. Um, are these rumours true? Is it Richie Port just trash talking? No one knows, but it's still pretty insane that he's doing this. These sort of numbers early in the season. Um, I think people predict about 7, 7.5, maybe even 8 watts per kilo for this sort of effort, because he's just absolutely flying, like... <laughs> it's just the thing is you can't really tell until you do a climb and you realize how fast he's going like he is just destroying like if you were trying to hold his wheel like most people could hold his wheel for probably 30 seconds to a minute full gas sprint because he's just going so hard um maybe like you could hold it for two minutes but it's just insane you got all the aussie fans going out it's mental for him as well you can see his technique's slightly failing at the end you can get tell he's getting a bit tired he does that thing where he sort of mistimes the when you're out the saddle a little bit, and you'll see when you're ready to start doing that a little bit. I mean, it's only a tiny bout, but you can see that on the edge a bit more. Jamie McCarthy managed to get back on. Now was chasing, but he's now been now struggling, and he's been caught back up by everyone else. Someone's got GoPro filming over Richie Port. You can see he's in the saddle. I think it flattens off at the top, and he's looks like he's sort of going 35. Um, maybe not. No, he's going faster, but I, yeah, I think now he's like doesn't look like he's going full full gas. Um, just looks pretty comfortable with the gap he's got. Probably just saving himself. That's the thing in stage There's no point absolutely murdering himself. But he does have a sprint stage tomorrow. So he's pretty no pretty much knows he's wrapped it up now. Got the W. Um, we'll see who scraps in for the end. Um, how many seconds he put in. I'd say it was probably like not as many as did seem when he first did his initial acceleration. Because there are a lot of people working behind. So you can see Nathan Haas is coming around. Um, Esteban Chavez. Or maybe, uh, and then... I'm not sure who the UAE rider is. It could be like Ulysses or someone. To be honest, I, I can't even recognise half these people, but it's a good ride from all them. They lost about like 15, 20 seconds, so decent ride for all them lot. Katusha coming off across the line. You know, they just got ported, to be honest, on Wollonga Hill, which is not really surprising. So cheers for watching. What are your predictions for Todd Allender? Will Richie Port do it again? I think he definitely will. Um, will there be any surprises? Will Sagan pick up some sprints? Will Viviani pick up some sprint wins? No one knows. And the question is, can anyone beat Port up Wollonga Hill? Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.